So I'm going to make a review. This is my new Carrier Infinity system that they're putting in. It's the heater and the air conditioner unit. I decided to go with the Infinity system because of the uh, cost of heating and because my other unit was very inefficient. It was 110,000 BTU, but it kept cycling constantly, going on, getting the house hot, and then it'd go off and the house would cool down and it was drafting our house. It's not a newer home. It's about late 80s is when they made it. So I decided to go with the uh, Carrier Infinity furnace and the five-stage outside air conditioning unit. So they're putting the ductwork in still. They're almost done, and they're also going to install the uh, Infinity touch control system, which will allow it to monitor the temperature outside and then learn as it goes through. So they're working on the return system. They got to build this one component right here. They just added all the new features, the new exhaust, all the components that go inside. And then they're also putting in my house that I wanted to have extra a uh, dual zone. So it's got an automatic Belimo valve that automatically controls it and senses and moves the temperature closed or open depending on where it wants the heat or the air conditioning at that time. Because I'm getting too old to keep running upstairs and downstairs and in the winter time shutting the duct off and closing the duct. So I went for the whole package and just got it all. And that way I don't have to worry about the temperature downstairs because the valve, this electronic valve right here will automatically regulate the temperature in real time and it doesn't just shut off like some of the cheaper ones will actually just shut off one zone until that zone is satisfied then it'll close the other zone and let the other zone go until it's satisfied this one will actually balance it between so you don't ever have to worry about one area getting hot one area getting cold and waiting for heat or air conditioning so we'll pop outside real fast we'll take a look at the uh, five stage uh, infinity air conditioner system so they just plopped it down and they put it on its own base because the concrete one that was below was actually not level and you didn't want to have a problem so they just used a new base to set it on so and there's a the little bit of piping that goes in they've already got the outside connected and the remote sensors that control the temperature for inside the house during the winter time and the summer time for the air conditioning unit and heater are up underneath kind of hard to see so anyway, you don't really cover this in the winter time, just maybe something on the top just to keep the leaves from getting inside there, but that's about it. And this is an affinity system. This is a five stage air conditioning unit on demand. So each stage gradually increases that it calls for more demand on the house to get the house cooler and cooler. So most of the time it's gonna be running in just dehumidify mode, which will actually keep the temperature down. And there's a little bit of the plate, if you can see it. But I also got this because all we had before was just a single stage. And all it would do is come on or off. And in order to get the humidity out of the house, sometimes you'd have to get it so cold, you'd need a jacket on inside the house. It wasn't very comfortable. So this will eliminate those type of problems. And all we'll have to do now is just actually set the temperature and it'll just dehumidify probably on one stage and it'll make it extremely comfortable in the house. So tomorrow they should have it all hooked up and finished and I'll show you the controller temporarily. It's not all hooked up yet, but I'll show you what it looks like. And this control unit, but it's not connected yet. So this one is upstairs, that's the main brain. And then the subcontroller sits downstairs, and that's the one that you can also control this one with. But this is the main controller in the upstairs, in the second zone. So this is the, this is the lower level zone. Um, this one is also a middle control. And you do have the commands for it. The main brains are upstairs, so it's just like a relay system, but it still monitors the temperature. And I actually had them place it um, center of our living room. Even though there's no wire in there, what I did temporarily just to make the wire until maybe next year I'll get an electrician in and run the wire up to the walls because our walls are all complete. There's nothing unfinished in this house. So all I did, it doesn't look too pretty. It looks better than just thermostat wire. I just made some, uh, bought some of that at Home Depot just to get it up and around and inside the room. Okay, also thought I mentioned, this is a 60,000 BTU unit. Um, everyone else, when I was having them run the numbers, they were estimating me at an 85,000 unit, um, which would kind of work okay, not the greatest. But the problem is that a high unit doesn't have a lot of run cycle, meaning it'll kick on, it'll get the house really hot, and then it'll shut off. And I don't want that anymore. I want the house a constant, nice, comfortable temperature. So this one not only has a variable speed drive, but it starts out at, since it's 60,000 BTU, the old one we have is 110,000. 
This one will start out at around, I believe it's 25 or 20,000 BTU at a starting temperature. And then after there, it'll slowly increase itself and it'll just keep going up and up and up as needed. And increments of 1% where my old one was just on or off. And then the other lower models are low and high. But I wanted the better model so that way I don't have to sit there and worry about just, you know, all kinds of little problems in the wintertime. And I wanted something darn nice this time because this will be the last heater air conditioner I'll probably buy for quite a while. This should last at least 20, around 30 years is what the estimation is. So it's got a 10 year parts warranty, one year labor warranty. Um, another manufacturer was going to give me five year labor warranty, but I think they pushed the price of their labor into the cost of the unit. So, but if you ever get a unit, you typically want to get it all at the same time. It's much more cost effective. If you're going to replace one, replace them both, because that way you're replacing the heat exchanger all at once with the new air conditioner unit. And then this way they work together. So. I'm hoping to also see a decrease in my energy bills, but I won't know until I actually start using it. So anyway, I think that's about it right now. You can look inside. I can't see, but there. So anyway, once they uh, get it all hooked up tomorrow and all this wiring is all connected, we'll be good to go. Oh, and my contractor did this. It looks like in total of only two days where all the other ones are saying about four or five days. They actually have four guys on site today working on it. So working pretty good and it looks great and I'll let you know what happens later. Well, it's the next day and it's all finished. They got the humidification system added. All the water lines are set up. It's a direct drive system. So it's got a small solenoid valve on the side. That's the water heater kicking on behind me. So. They got the rest of the lines all plumbed in, it's all fitted, the valves are all connected up. There's the lower zone for the bottom of the house, and there's the upper zone for the top of the house. As you can see, they got all the ductwork all done. It's all connected up now, looks good. It's working great, it's actually running right now. If the water heater wasn't on, you could probably hear it. So what I'll do right now is I'll walk outside and show what they did out there. So we're outside right now, the system's running. They got it all plumbed in. All the electrical lines are all finished. It's all sealed up. And you can barely hear it right now. What you hear right now is the water heater over here on the exhaust. Just a small little hum. And it's running on the minimum stage right now. And what we did, because the temperature sensor is actually up inside by default and you typically should have it installed on the north side of the house or in a shaded area that doesn't get any sun so what I had them do is since I had wiring going to my detached garage I just had them add the wiring from one location to another location and they just extended it so now what we're doing is the wiring's going up and across which is the little wire right over here since we don't use our telephone box anymore that wire actually went into our detached garage already and wasn't being used and right here this little guy right here that's a remote thermostat so it's monitoring the air on the outside it's basically inside that little thing so we're going to put a little cover around it like for a vent for a uh, dryer duct so that way we don't accidentally bump into it but this way it's high enough off the ground so in the winter time it won't get piled on with snow and that'll monitor the temperature because we see this side of the house always gets sun year round and the temperature when they first hooked it up was showing 97 degrees when it's actually only like 78 degrees out here. So by moving it over here, we're going to get an accurate temperature reading so it knows what the outside temperature is. So let's go back inside and take a look and I'll show you where the direction of the valves are right now. Okay, back inside. So real quick, if you see the direction of this, that's going this direction. So right now, the lower half of the house is shut off. The Blimo valve has this duct turned off. If you look up top, that's straight up and down. So basically the air is flowing in and out right now. So right now we're technically only cooling the lower half, the upper half of the house, the lower half is not cooling at all. And then once it meets temperature, it's then going to monitor and run in the lower stage just to pull the humidity. So I've had the unit in now for almost the whole winter and it's been working fantastic. So right now you can hear the noise of the humidifier system and you can see the water running down into the tube as it's going through the filter. 
and right now we're still set on winter and we'll be changing over to summer coming up. And the Blimo valve has been working fantastic. You can see right now the upper one is in the closed state, so there's no air flowing through upstairs. And right now we're only needing heat in the downstairs part, and just the downstairs part of the valve is open 100%. And I have the system set for a different time where the Belimo valves basically are constantly moving air through the house. Um, low on the upstairs and higher on the downstairs and even though the fan only goes a certain speed the valve slowly open and close to make that happen based upon the amount of airflow that you want through the house and the humidity control is right now set to not mess up the windows basically not get them all um, over humidified and it's based upon the temperature sensor that's sitting outside on the north side of our property so the system's been running fantastic all winter, haven't had any problems with it. Um, the one thing I did notice is by running it so constantly, I need to replace the filters. Uh, I did try to get the filters locally, and due to the size of the filters, they were not too easy to achieve to get. So what I did anyway is I found the price online, and actually the price for my local dealer, it was the same price as if I were to buy them online and have them shipped. And they just dropped two of them off as their only minimum charge. So they just dropped them off, and I just put them in. So it's a lot easier than me having to order anything and they just know what they need to bring over. So anyway, the system's been working fantastic. Been keeping the house comfortable 70 degrees all winter downstairs when normally we used to run it between 64 and 65 because the energy bill would be so high. So we're going to go ahead and we'll take a look at the uh, controller unit downstairs see what it's running at right now. So here's the downstairs controller unit. And right now you can see it's kind of warm outside. It's out. It's 40 degrees outside. The fan's on low. And this unit only controls the downstairs. At first I thought it controlled the upstairs, but I quickly learned after reading the book it's only for downstairs, which makes sense because this is where this one small controller unit is. And you can manually bypass the fan unit right over here. So you can turn the fan up to different speeds. Um, here's what it's set to. And I temporarily have the heat set because I'm working downstairs. Um, so I have it set at um, 70 degrees until 115 and at 115 it'll click over to the time that I have pre-programmed on the unit upstairs the master controller you can also set it lower you can change the time so if you want it to stay on longer before it chips jump to the next program you can but I found it to be really nice because all you do is basically turn up the temperature setting right here and we turn it up or down all it does, it'll start increasing or decreasing this, and you just say when, and you just bring it up or down on the little clock here, and that's it. Very simple, very easy to use. So let's take a look at the unit upstairs now, how it's been working. So here's the unit upstairs. I got some old ducks above them, just sitting there. Anyway, you can see what the temperature is. It's the date and the time. It's 40 degrees outside. They're both communicating. Partly cloudy. Temperature upstairs is 67. We keep it much cooler up here because the heat from downstairs slowly may come up here. And the bedrooms tend to get hotter and they're farther away from the heat system. Um, you can see the status of the Wi-Fi, how, well, how strong it's connected. We have an extremely strong system in our house. We have multiple what we call mesh point units, so that's never a problem. You can also run this hardwired if you want. Um, probably a good idea if you're never going to be really monkeying with it because then you have no worries about disconnection. But I haven't had any problem with this unit disconnecting or giving me any grief at all. So um, we'll go into the unit. So right now we are in the home mod, home program. We're running per schedule. You do need to learn how to program these all. So it takes a little bit of doing to figure it out to get it correct. Um, so right now that's what it's wanted to heat up to. And right now that's where we're currently at. So it's not going to do anything. So if we go into features, we can see what right now we're running. We're running fan low. Humidity is actually 42%. And right now we're connected to the My Infinity system. Um, so if we go out here, heat mode. From here you can go to heat, cool, um, fan only or off. I was originally going to try running on automatic, but I didn't want to accidentally try kicking on in the air conditioner, which it would do. Um, because it would try to maintain that heat or coolness always. So. I think for where we live, we're not an industrial building. We're just going to stay with uh, the temperature based upon the uh, season of the year. So we'll back out of there. And then you can go into menu. And then inside here, you have all your settings. So here's our temperature and fan profiles. 
Um, I don't have uh, a way one. We don't use the away one because my wife's always home, so there's no point. So that one part, I just don't have part of our settings, but you have an upstairs and a downstairs. And those can be completely different programmings. As you can see, some of the numbers change because I don't want the upstairs the same as the downstairs. Um, hand of humidity profiles, where you want it, how you want it ran. So we are going to heating. So that's where we're at right now. Humidify is 45%, the maximum. And I do have the controller on right now. Back out of here, back out of here, back out of here. And then window protection setup, got to hit it right spot. Um, by having it turned on, it does help a lot. I was thinking of turning it off. Actually, no, we'll turn it off right now. We'll say no. Window not protected, and that's fine. So we're going to go in and see what we're actually set up at. Da, 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 da. So we'll go into here and heating humidify. And I think we're actually, yeah, we're as high up as we're going to go because the temperature is so warm outside, it's going to be fine. And we're not going to get any zero degrees coming up, so I'll probably leave that off. No big deal. So done. We'll go back into menu. We have the scheduling. I think I kind of walked through this. I don't remember. Um, but here's my scheduling. Like I said, I don't have the away one set up because I don't use it. And we just basically have it kicking on at 6.30. Then 8.30 kicks up a little bit higher. And then 7.45. And I have the fan set at different levels on the uh, kick on and kick off and the sleep mode. So it's always moving air through the house. And you can select that for every day of the week. Something different. Um, upstairs and downstairs can be totally different as you see. I got different times for the downstairs versus the upstairs. Um, you can also, if you have a USB drive, you can actually back up your settings and then restore them that way. And vacation reminders, that is for filter and humidifier, so it lets you know that you need to change them. Operating status, all right, let's see if we can see this a little bit better here. Operating status, so right now, takes a few seconds for it to sometimes pop up. On the app, it takes a little bit longer when you're going at it. So right now, it's fan only. The gas heat is off. The humidifier is off right now. Um, so let's go back out of here. Operating status, it's saying 49% of the filter has been used on the humidifier. And I just reset the filter for the air um, the other day. Even though it wasn't really used, I just reset it anyway. Um, temperature control status, you can see what it's actually doing, what it's trying to achieve. So you can see the uh, upper zone and the lower zone and where it's actually at and what it's trying to do to work to get there. Um, unfortunately, if this was running, you'd be able to see all the, all the notifications inside here. Right now it's not. So what else do we have? We have display. You can set the back levels, the sounds, the lights, you can have a screensaver. Yeah. Energy tracking, I do use this a lot. Um, so for the energy tracking, I have it set up to where it's showing the energy usage. I already have it set up for my zone, for my fuel type. So it already knows what my therms are at and what my kilowatts are at. So right here, we're going with cooling. It says cooling and gas heating and with the fan. So you can see all the breakdowns of everything. So this is estimated daily. So let's see, Sunday we used Roughly estimating it, uh, $2.11 in heating. Saturday, $2.28. And you can see that the fan constantly running, the fan without the heat running, just the electricity run, just the fan, and then actual gas. Uh, and we go, there's my yearly usage so far. You know, there's, that's hardly anything. So, although it was very cool this winter, um, and I have windows and doors that are so old, they all need to be replaced. So that's why my heating is up. But also we had three other people living with us, small children. So we kept it even warmer downstairs all through the night. Um, and then we go into our monthly, which is kind of nice. Cause then you can actually kind of check it to see, are you really getting what you're, what you believe you're doing it with as far as energies and bills. So anyway, that's my estimated daily usage back out of there and like I said I've already put these numbers inside here that's my usage it's 14 cents per kilowatt a dollar 20 per therm and all I did 
to get those numbers is you just get your energy bill and you're going to have a number inside there excluding your taxes. I just left the taxes in there. I just divided it up by the number of uh, therms that I used and popped that in there and that's really darn close. It's not an exact science but it's going to get you really close because then you're really calculating in taxes, you're really calculating in your paying for the usage of the line plus the line plus the gas. It's all these funky calculations they do. So that gets really darn close. Same with electricity. Um, we'll back up out of there. Um, date, time, energy tracking, and this one's nice. This is the only one I wish I could actually have it on as a display all the time. It doesn't stay on all the time. That's one kind of downside. I would like it, but at the same time, I do want to know what it's actually running. But it's nice because you can take a quick forecast and see, you know, what's the temperature actually going to be the next few days. It's not exact, but it's really darn close based upon the weather service. So it is nice to see it. I wish it could be a screensaver, but it's not. Um, maybe I could say something and make a recommendation if they could pop that in as a screensaver. But anyway, it is what it is. So back out of there. Uh, back out of there. And the wireless setup, the service is your local um, company that you have put inside here. Your models and serial numbers are all back inside here for all your different pieces, so it is really nice. Software updates, service reminders. Um, if there's something wrong, you can actually have your service provider get a copy of what's going on electronically. They can get a notification if you allow it and send it to them. Um, one thing you got to be careful of is there is a spot when you first go to program it, and it's something stating, um, helping us save energy with your energy company. If you select that, I don't remember where it is. It was in the initial setup. If you select that, based upon what the energy company says they want, they will cut back your usage, meaning they'll turn your heat down or your air conditioner up, um, and you won't even know it. So unless you're really energy conscious and you don't care what your settings of your house are when you're not there or when you're sleeping or when you're awake it'll change on you and i found that out so i turned all that stuff off because i don't want the energy company telling me when they want to save energy and shutting that shutting my system off so that's why i got a system so it uses less energy anyway so just keep an eye when you program that for the first time but anyway it's been a fantastic use it unit haven't had any problems whatsoever um, looking forward to coming up and seeing how this summer works with the uh, air conditioner a little bit more. We got a lot of use out of it, luckily, before it got to winter because it got so hot. But we had other people living with us, so it wasn't really a good test because it was very difficult to try to figure out what the temperature really was in our house. But So I'll let you know more as that goes, and that's it. Thanks.